So the first step that's listed uh, as a uh, retouching task in your packet is to crop and straighten a picture. Now this is actually a destructive edit. It's going to change the pixels permanently. You're not going to be able to get this back. But it doesn't really matter because there's no reason I can think of where I would want these white pixels out to the side. So this is pretty common when you use a uh, scanner especially, but you can use it to straighten out pictures uh, from a digital camera um, as well. So I'm going to take the crop tool and I'm going to draw a box around everything. Now this obviously is not what I want to keep yet, but I can take that crop box and I can rotate it. So my image is rotated to the right uh, clockwise, so I'm going to do the same thing to my crop box. I'm going to rotate it to the right, okay, and, and until it seems kind of parallel. So the, my dancing ants are not quite on the image yet, but it is kind of parallel to the edges of my picture and then I can bring these in and then I can hit enter to apply it and it'll crop out all that extra space and straighten, on, straighten up my picture. I think I could have done a better job with that but you get the idea. Go ahead and, and uh, straighten up your picture. So the next adjustment that we're going to make is going to be a non-destructive adjustment which means that I'm not going to change the pixels at all. What I'm going to do is use an adjustment from the adjustment panels to change the tonal variation. Tonal variation uh, means the difference between the dark areas and the light areas and, and our eye likes to have really wide tonal variation where we have nice pure black dark darks in our picture and nice pure white light light highlights in our picture. So there are a couple ways to do it but um, kind of the beginner way is this levels adjustment. So I can click on that and you'll observe in the layers panel um, I have this levels uh, adjustment um, layer that comes up. So that means this is something that I can turn on and turn off and it's just affecting the layers down below, which in this case is just one layer. But I get this histogram. A histogram is like a bar graph, but it's continuous. So I've got uh, black here and white here. So then I've got these continuous tones going from black to white. So dark gray, dark gray getting a little bit lighter, middle gray here and then lighter gray, lighter gray, light light gray all the way to white. So you can see that from the graph there is no white pixels and there are no black pixels. Uh, but I have some dark gray and that's the shadow that's around the flowers and I have some light gray which is um, the, the shutters that are here. So I can turn those shadows to a nice dark uh, value by grabbing that little triangle and sliding it in. And you'll see your whole image darken up and that's okay. And I do the same thing then with the highlights. I grab the little white triangle and I slide that in. Now our picture is not done by any means. Um, I can also grab that medium one and brighten up the whole picture or darken it up, whatever it needs. So I've got my middle gray set. Um, it's not done by any means, but at least I have nice tonal variation now. The picture should look brighter and cleaner. So go ahead and use your layers, uh, your layer adjustment for levels uh, uh, to adjust your tonal variation. So we've adjusted the tonal variation. The next thing we want to do is actually adjust the, um, the color balance. Now a lot of times when you take a picture, uh, depending on the lighting, depending on the camera, you might get what we call a color cast. Same thing happens with scanners. Uh, a lot of times they have a color cast to them. Uh, a lot of times it just takes experience to understand that your image has a color cast um, and you'll get used to noticing whether you have one uh, or not. This picture has a slight magenta color cast that we need to fix. So in my adjustment panel, it's still on my levels from the previous adjustment that I made, I can click on this little back arrow uh, that's at the bottom of the adjustments panel. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click on the little one that looks like a scale that says color balance. You can go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on the scale and I get, um, I get a little box here that actually I can have a lot of control with. Um, I can adjust shadows, midtones, and highlights separately. Um, I'm going to start with midtones and you can see that I have two colors that are kind of opposite. Uh, cyan, magenta, yellows over here, red, green, blues over here. So if I recognize that I have a magenta color cast, and again, that's just going to be an experience thing, um, I can just nudge that slightly toward the green, and you'll see it start to you know, clean up and brighten up a little bit. 
Uh, I might also probably do this with the highlights. Um, the highlights are actually a little bit cyan, and I'm looking at uh, the curtains in here. They're a little bit light bluish, so I'm going to nudge that toward uh, red. And I might go ahead and nudge my magenta away as well. So shadows are okay, but if you go to midtones, just reviewing here, go to midtones, nudge your green up away from magenta, and on highlights, also nudge that green a little bit up away from magenta, and also nudge your red up away from cyan to help clean up these curtains. Okay, go ahead and do that. So now that we've done two non-destructive edits, I want to show you how uh, sometimes you can make a destructive edit uh, as long as you are uh, careful and safe and kind of back yourself up. Um, so we, we like this image at this point, but there's some things that we want to change. We want to change the color uh, up here. So I want, to, I want to show you the color replacement brush. Uh, but I don't want to mess up my picture here. I know that I'm an okay point. I don't want to have to import this picture again. So I'm actually going to copy it to a new layer, the whole picture as it looks right now. So I'm going to hit, and you can do this with me, Control A to select the whole thing. And then up at the top here, I'm going to go to Edit and Copy Merged. And that takes all of my layers and flattens them together as I copy them. Copy Merged. And then I can make a new layer in my new layer, uh, use my new layer icon in the Layers panel. And then I'm going to Control V for Paste. And what I've done so far will now show up by itself as Layer 1, which I'm going to rename to Copy Merged. So since I've sort of backed up my work so far, I don't mind changing the pixels on this layer because I can always go back to this kind of midpoint here. There's other ways to save your pro progress. If you get more advanced, you might learn um, about um, a way to save your layers in, in a special kind of way. And then also you can do snapshots in your history panel. So there's a lot of different ways to kind of do this workflow. Uh, but for beginners, I think this one works well, um, creating copies of your picture as you go. Um, so we've got this layer here. We're ready to make some changes to it. So I'm going to um, change the, top, the paint at the top of this, this photo up here to match more of the green that's down below here. So I'm going to select a color. So I'm going to go to my color picker. And I think that's a little bright. I'm going to nudge that down a little bit. You can copy the numbers that I have here, uh, 94 red, 129 green, 120 blue. And you're going to have a bluish, greenish sort of color that we can use uh, to paint in there at the top. So with this green selected, I can click OK. And uh, I'm going to go to the color uh, replacement tool, um, which is hidden underneath the brush tool. And when I find that, this is what I have with that tool. This is a great tool. Um, it's a circle, OK? So that means it's a brush uh, that I can resize. I can use those bracket keys. Or I can choose different types of brushes uh, here, changing my, you know, how hard or soft the brush is, how big the brush is up here, just like we've seen with other brushes. But the way it works is that it looks at the pixels that are underneath the plus sign. So in this case, let me zoom in a little bit. Um, in this case, the pixels underneath the plus sign are blue. Uh, and then so it's going to change the color of all the blue uh, pixels that are inside the circle. Um, if I go over and I overlap um, this brownish windowsill or the white of the, of the shutter, it's not going to color that in because it's not blue and my plus sign is only on blue pixels right now. So this is how it ends up working. Start painting. Okay, isn't that great? Isn't that cool? Okay, so it's not going on to um, anything except for those blue pixels. Move my layers panel out of the way, finish it up. And I've um, now recolored the top of the building that had sort of a fake blue color more to the green color that's on our goal image. Okay, so go ahead and use the color replacement tool to change the blue building to green. This, by the way, is the tool that you would use if you wanted to take a picture of your friend, change the color of their t-shirt. You've got a, a friend who's, an Ohio, uh, say, a Michigan fan, and you want to put Ohio State red onto them. That's the, um, that's the tool that you would use. So even though we changed the pixels with this, this is a merged layer here. We can always trash that and go back. I kind of have a backup 
uh, copied down here below in my layers panel. So if I wanted to, I can go back to that picture by just turning off or trashing that layer. But let's move on. Let's keep working with this uh, layer. I'm going to show you a couple of other things for changing pictures. Again, they, uh, they might be destructive. Uh, you might learn some non-destructive ways to do this as you go, but it's important to learn the tools here at the beginning. Um, we're going to use some tools that come to us from other art rooms. Um, in this stack here, it, you have a dodge tool on top. The dodge tool comes to us from photography, as does the burn tool. The do when you dodge in the darkroom in photography, you make things lighter. So if I were to now scrub this over, it's going to make things lighter. Uh, the burn tool, which we're not going to practice today, but I want you to see it, is the opposite of dodging. Burning puts more light on your photo paper, uh, which will make an object darker. Okay, so for burning, you make things darker. Uh, but we're going to just try dodging first. And we're going to change some settings on our dodge tool. Because it's a computer and not a darkroom, I'm going to change my range to highlights. It should be on midtones by default. I'm going to change it to highlights. And uh, I'm going to turn my exposure down really far. I'm going to set it at like about 10%. And then this is what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to just gently go over the curtains here. And by gently, I mean we're going to take one, maybe two passes over it. You can see even two passes actually starts to make it neon blue. So one quick pass over this is all we need to just slightly lighten up uh, some of the highlights on this curtain. If you go over it too many times, say three, four times, you're going to turn them to more of a neon blue. And it's really hard as a beginner to get this uh, very subtle. But it's just a subtle one pass over sort of thing. So go ahead and use that dodge tool to lighten up your curtain. Next tool we want to use is from the same stack. It's the sponge tool. That comes to us from the painting room. Um, the sponge tool uh, in painting, when you put down a watercolor wash, you can use the sponge to pull out and desaturate some of the color. Desaturate means that I make my colors less bright and eventually gray. It also means that I can saturate my color. So I can take this, flip that to saturate. I'll keep my flow at 50%. And I'm going to go over the flowers just to make them a touch brighter. The last step that I want to do um, is something we do to the end of a lot of photographs, and that's sharpen it. Now, the sharpen tools in CS5 aren't going to make a blurry picture sharp, though they're working on it actually for future versions of Photoshop. Um, if I go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, and it's, it's a very subtle thing here as well. There's a preview box that you can turn it on and off to see how much you have, uh, how much sharpening you have. I don't want to turn my radius up too much. Keep it under 1. The amount, I'm going to not crank that up a whole lot. It look, can look really bad if you crank it up too much. Um, I'm going to keep that under 100% probably. I'm going to keep mine around 60. And you can turn off the preview, turn it on, turn it off, and you'll see that it just slightly brings out some of the details, especially in the flowers. So once you're happy with it, and as long as you haven't over sharpened it, go ahead and click OK to finish that off. So all of these steps together work as a workflow to improve pictures. There are other workflows out there. As you learn, you'll learn how to do some of these things non-destructively that we looked at destructively. Uh, it's kind of interesting, though, at the end of a picture to go back and look at it before and after. So if I turn off all of these layers, I can see my picture before. Kind of dark, gray, color cast, nothing really standing out, not really a great scan. And then I turn it back on, and my picture is sharper, the color's more accurate, um, if maybe a little too bright on the flowers, but the color is more accurate overall, and we've got a, a pretty good-looking image uh, using our workflow for retouching uh, photos.